So it's about uh, slightly after 5.30 on, what's this, Thursday, October 17th. This is the, um, going to call to order the uh, public hearing for the Yellow Barn project. Um, and uh, we have our architect, James Coe, is here with us tonight, which is great. Um, and there are other folks, there have been a bunch of folks involved in this project team. <laughs> and uh, um, I said that I thought we could cover any updates amongst us and people who were at meetings for this this morning didn't need to also appear in Hardwick tonight. So um, we have, uh, I think the select board all has this, um, uh, this is this is the draft of the executive update, uh, or sorry, executive summary of the project. And um, at our meeting this morning, it was discussed that it wasn't summary enough. That um, there's too much detail, and we need to, for some audiences, we're going to need to slim it down. But it's a piece of. Um, of information that we have for us here tonight and for those of us here tonight it's got a backside too and for those of us here tonight um, I think it's gonna be useful to be able to read through and take home and whatever um, but the slim down version is gonna be much slim down just bullet points not legal size paper the whole thing so um, and let's see I want to give a just a brief update on where we are with the project um, and I'm going to try to do sort of a timeline from memory. Anybody feel, in, feel free to jump in and correct me, but um, I think it was just about two years ago that we, the select board, stood out in front of the Yellow Barn with a congressional delegation and accepted uh, uh, and NBRC the grant. Right, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And the, governor, and the and governor. It was only two years ago. Are you sure it wasn't three years ago? I, 2017, August 2017. There it was go. warmer. Yeah. So it was yeah, two a little over two years ago. Mm -hmm. it, and at that point, we'd already been working on it for at least a year. Uh -huh. um, so at that that's when we got that grant. That grant was um, for the purchase of the property, and I'm happy to announce that yesterday the town finally closed on the property so we are now the proud owners of that property uh, so f doesn't sound like a big step and it sounds like a lot of time elapsed but what happened was that we needed to get a whole bunch of permitting in order before we could acquire the property so it is actually a pretty big milestone because acquiring the property means that most all of the permitting is now in place. All this environmental permitting that was really onerous, honestly. Um, things that we had to do twice and you know threatened to do three times and all this stuff is now in place um, for this project. And we've acquired the property as of yesterday and then moving forward the next few weeks are gonna be um, really uh, for this project so uh, if I let's see if I can get my dates right so next week on the 20th October 23rd the third and final um, application materials are due to EDA the which is the Federal Economic Development Authority and um, so that application, we've been in contact with them. They're working with us. They're excited about the project. So we're hopeful that we're going to be awarded our grant on, from them. That's on the 23rd, on the 25th, which is also next week, right? Uh, yes, Friday. The, um, there's a board meeting at VITA, which is where uh, Vermont Economic Development Authority, and they um, were working with them on a loan, a fairly large loan for financing for this project. And so we have um, um, a woman, Un Young, who's been meeting with us right along, who's their underwriter, and she's presenting it to her board on the 25th. So we have first piece of fi financing, uh, the EDA application, that's a $3 million ask, that's on the 23rd on the 25th on Friday is um, 
uh, the presentation to the VITA board, and that's, I think, about a $2 million loan. And then November 7th, so just two weeks following, is where our presentation to the um, VCDP board, the Vermont Community Development Program, and that's a million dollar ask. And those are major pieces for financing, and that's all happening in the next three weeks. So it's going to be pretty fast paced. For, for our viewers, yeah. um, the $2 million loan, mm -hmm. if things tank, mm -hmm. who's on the hook for that money? So okay, that's a great question. And um, it, I'll give a two-part answer. So one is if, if things go to plan, what happens is that loan gets nearly paid off at the end of construction when we close on a new markets tax credit um, deal. That has been in the works this for uh, I think two years, so it's been coming along. So the plan is that that loan gets taken out at the end of construction by the new market tax credits. Not the, not the Hardwick taxpayer. <clears throat> That's a federal program aimed to stimulate economic development, and um, this the folks. It's maybe a little complicated to get into the ins and outs, but the folks who are interested in um, uh, pro in using credit tax who get the tax credits from the federal government and have to look for projects to fund, and this is a project that two funders such funders are very excited about, and another three are being lined up as backups to those two. Okay. So anyway, so that's if it goes to plan. If it all falls apart, the, there's going to be a structure in place where the, the loan actually is going to go to um, Vermont Community, no, sorry, uh, NEK Development Corporation. So there's, there's this complex structure that's getting, um, built in order for the new market tax credits to work. And so the loan is for the construction. It's not actually a loan to the town. So the town is okay. not actually borrowing that okay. money in that case. Those are the words I wanted to hear. Yeah. So, um, but, I mean, that said, we're pretty heavily invested, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we are, we've, been, we've really put a lot of effort into this project. Um, we now own the property. And so it's, we're, I feel like we're invested. We really yeah. want to see it through. Yeah. Yeah, well, the whole there's thing. a huge benefit for the town. So some benefits for the town from this sheet are, I think, the biggest ones that stand out for me. I mean, there's there's estimates on economic impacts, you know, in dollars and stuff. But for me, the things that really stand out are the job creation numbers, and um, that are. First anchor, our primary anchor tenant is looking to to um, fill 40 to 50 permanent full-time positions. I think this is over the over a five-year period. We're going to see that play out. And the second, we now have a second anchor tenant, and they're looking at a 10 10 full-time permanent jobs. So, um, or 10 yeah 10 permanent jobs four full-time and six nearly full-time. So to me, that's an exciting an exciting part and that there'll be a visitor center component. So there's like a, there's also a tourist component mm -hmm. that's I think important. Um, and we've already amongst ourselves started talking about, wow, if we're bringing tourists there to the gateway to Hardwick in the Northeast Kingdom, then we also need to figure out the logistics for getting a portion of those folks to stop downtown. Mm -hmm. And so that's that'll be a project, a separate effort for us, I think, to figure out logistics for parking and things like that. So... And those will be decent pay jobs, too. Correct. Like 17 to $20 an hour, and then the other full-time range was 28 to 50000 So Right. Those so are real jobs. Right. In our community. Yeah, which is great. Um, I'll just go through where we're at with some recent um, uh, drawings that um, from GoInfo architecture. So this is like a sort of an aerial view sketch up of the 
This is the yellow barn, the existing yellow barn is going to be completely renovated. So um, it's a historical structure and, and from the three, the side facing the road and the two ends, it's going to look just like it looks except except that things are going to be straight and true. Except and, improved. Yeah. Except improved. Preserved. Preserved. Restored. But improved. And on the back side, it's also going to be a lot like it is, but there's going to be an added sort of porch portico type thing off the back. And the um, existing shed in the back is going to go away. They're just, um, we needed parking back parking. there. Um, and then and so, and then this whole thing over here is a new building. This, I think at this point, James, feel free to jump in, but I think this is pretty much what we feel the footprint is going to be like. I think in terms of one, of like what the facade will be, I think that's still yet to be determined, correct? Yeah. Correct. We have to wait for the final tenant next to understand where windows and doors and... And also, and also we've been trying to, to use our existing funding for James to help us with things that needed to happen now. So figuring out what the footprint's going to be allows us to figure out what the stormwater runoff's going to be, allows us to change to use an engineer to help us get the permit for stormwater runoff, for example. So those are the things we haven't been saying, oh, you know, show us the pretty facade. It's more than like help us move, along, move the project along. So after we get funded, it's going to be a race. It's going to be a race. Right. The that, yeah. I'm sorry, that new building is um, largely, you know, sustainable architecture. It good. is kind of a, a, a price to have a, a high performance thermal shell mm -hmm. so it use as little energy as possible. Um, Great. There's all sorts of um, uh, energy concepts that we're weighing and mod we'll model mm -hmm. to find out the best solution in terms of heating systems, PV, solar, etc. Okay. And we're also in conversations with um, Efficiency Vermont. Right. And they are they are very interested in this project and want to partner with us to to do a um, they're gonna provide a lot of those um, engineering services to determine the best solution. Mm -hmm. Right. And then I think I think they'll probably, you know, they're somebody we can ask to help with funding or help set us up with funding for, for some of those things, like solar panels or if we have a, if we end up with a ground source heat pump or a, or a biomass boiler of some sort or whatever we end up with. So, um, <clears throat> trying to think. So, I'll just add that it's, gonna, it's a really difficult site. There's weapons. There's this pitch in a triangular shape. Yeah. Um, and, we, and we've maximized the development potential while preserving all the natural characteristics and meeting the letter of the law. Mm -hmm. Right, that's a really good point. So this, I think on this building, this drawing, you can see a little better. The wetland is over here. The wetland is between, if people are familiar with that flat area on the west side of the barn that used to have used cars and some parts cars mm -hmm. that's all elevated. So this accelerated, accelerated building takes over almost that whole flat spot, but doesn't go down over into the wetland. So the wetland is when you just go down over the bank right there. And um, the land does continue, the property continues to the Lamoille River, and there's mm -hmm. that dirt parking lot trailhead that's down there that we expect to remain. Mm -hmm. um, Is that a boat right launch there. too? Uh, as part of the canoe, there's a yeah. canoe trail thing <clears throat> kind of designated Something, there. Yeah. 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 Um, and the rail trail is right here too, which is a great, um, it's going to be, I think, a great complement to this project. Uh, in future, not, not part of the current project or the current budget, but we are look, thinking about um, uh, how we could get some more parking in front of our sewer plant where the farmer's market used to be because um, because our second anchor tenant is going to fill this, they're going to do this um, visitor center component, which is something that we wanted from the beginning, like how do we get people to stop and stop in Hardwick as part of this, which is great, except that this parking is probably not sufficient, so we're going to the, the town, we the town, can do something to provide some park. And it's probably going to be a gravel lot type thing, right? Mm -hmm. I think that's right. Yeah. So, um, 
What else? <sighs> Ten minutes to fill. Come on. <laughs> I was wondering about the end. Talk about the pilot project again. We talked about that earlier. And then next, and then back back on board or? for the pilot project for. Well, it's just because Hartwick is going to own the party. We just bought the property, yep. so so we can't tax ourselves. But there was oh pilot some pilot uh, payment in lieu of taxes. Right. 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 Yeah. So. Um, Yes, so the plan there is, so there's a business plan behind this. So with the, the hope, the, not the hope, the plan is that what's going to happen with this is the town's going to own it, but we're not going to operate it. And there's a business plan that's set up such that the, um, uh, it'll basically pay for itself. And it is going to, um, we worked out with our uh, assessors to uh, a, an approximate value based on the plans. Like, here's what this would be valued at for an assessed value. We looked at what the taxes would be on that. And then um, what we decided on was a, um, it's like an incremented ramped up thing where in the beginning it doesn't pay very much, but by, I, don't like, I haven't looked at this in so long. Is it year five or year seven? Year seven, maybe? It says year seven. It's noted in the executive Seven. Summary. And it's, it is year seven because, it, mm -hmm. uh, okay. Yes, yeah, so year seven, it starts paying full um, uh, pilot. So it's not technically a pilot. It's not technically taxed because it's owned by the town, but it's a... Uh, it's going to be, it'll, we'll have like an, some sort of instrument, whether that's a lease document or a memorandum of understanding or we're, something will, will state what that is. But we've got it, it's currently in the business plan. The numbers work with that in there. And the reason that, one reason it ramps up over seven years is because if the new market tax credits go through at year seven, there is a, a closing fee actually as part of participating in that program. So the project needs to accumulate enough cash to pay that closing fee in year seven, and then after that, that money that was being set aside for the, that use can be used for paying back the town. And it's similar to a structure we might set up, we have in the past sometimes set up um, uh, tax um, stabilization agreements mm -hmm. with people who have done major projects in town that we think are going to have a strong economic impact where we gradually increase their tax burden over a number of years so they don't get slammed right away. Yeah. So it's a similar concept. Mm -hmm. So like the gold buildings and that. Um, yep. And Larry's and Larry yellow bond, uh, yellow, uh, hard again. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Could I have been more long-winded with that? Yeah, well, it's, no, that's good. <laughs> um, what else? What else? Anything stand out? And so the timeline is um, as we get all these things done in the next couple of weeks, yep. and then construction and well, before construction, James does a lot of work. Yeah, <laughs> we have December through I guess May to, to construction figure out the. The plans. We have to go out to bid to select a general contractor for the project. Um, there's still a building permit. We've done all the land use permits. We have to get a zoning permit still at the town of from the town park downstairs. But we have to build the Christian that we're working with her, and she's really the last step in all of the land use permitting. And it fits with the town plan. Correct. In general, yeah. Yeah, she's been abreast of the yeah. yeah. We get a building permit for fire life safety, and then we go to bid to contractors. Mm -hmm. with the aim of breaking ground as soon as the mud leaves, say May 15th or May 1st. Next year. And then we're expecting construction to go on for a full year with occupancy in 2021, May of 2021. That'll be a good spring festival weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the rail trail will be complete at that point up along that portion. Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> I hope so. It depends how you define that portion. <laughs> yeah, I mean we That is a hope, yes. It is it's more than a hope. I mean this we, one will be, but <clears throat> yeah, but it's gonna go right to there. Yeah. The, the other section that goes right 
to yeah. there. Let's see. Yeah. From that point back into the downtown area will be complete. Well, that's amazing. That will be amazing to have that connection, that link back from this new project to the downtown. Yep. Right. And all the way, well, with any luck, you'll be able to also get out to East Hardwick. Um, we should have, um, we've actually got a contractor to redeck the bridges that need to be redecked between here and there. Be, they're supposed to be, have that done by June 30th next year. Might do it, they might do it sooner. So that's all. Cool. Yeah, it's all good. Um, all right, what else about this? So having gravel parking on the parking lot you're in some electrical charging station, it would all be, how's that? Not a bad idea. <laughs> so we're also talking about, I don't know if you walked in when I was saying, they were talking about a little parking in front of the wastewater plant as well, but I think that can't, probably can't be paved because well, of... Actually it actually doesn't matter. It doesn't? It's one where they consider both gravels also. Yes. So that's an interesting idea though for making it more of a yeah, and even if it was paid, you can get put it in a retention pond where things run right away. Right. Well, yeah. So then you still, still be good. And a charging station kind of thing would be an even through a parking ride. That's a great idea. Absolutely. But, yeah. And, and especially since we have to, we, as a calendar has to do that, other parking is separate. It's not in front of the wastewater plant. We're not considering that as part of the price. It's not in the budget for the, the yellow arm project. Something that we want to. Do to accommodate more tourism. So that might be a great way to make that happen. Yeah. Any other questions, comments? So we could close this public hearing and have a, a three minute cookie break before the uh, select board meeting. Yeah. yeah. Let's do that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. All right. So I'm going to declare this meeting public hearing closed. And um, in three minutes or so, we'll start up again with a select, regular select board meeting. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, James.